track at the wall. We are tied. Look at this. He slammed it forward. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Oh, from with a big leg. Over for the cover. He got it. Unbelievable. High fly ball into right field. She is gone. Awesome. He got it. The starter. Mike Tyson in. Austin is the champion. Stone Cold. Stone Cold. Stone Cold. Now the 2 2. Well hit down the left for a line. Way back in. Touch the ball, Drew. You'll never hit a bigger home run in your life. What's up, Connection? Welcome to the WWE War. Thank you, Marcus. Wrestling Above Replacement. I'm JT. That's Marcus. We honor all the great legends and their theme music here on WWE War and beyond. We are simulcast both in video and audio. Video on YouTube. Audio on any podcast application or North-South Connection. Follow us across all of social media. Just a touch of what you got going on. Ryan Gray and I counted down every single WrestleMania match ever. All 402 of them. Done so in short form format, one minute or less on every match. And that airs on YouTube Shorts as a playlist if you want to catch up and see them all. Also on TikTok, on Instagram, and Facebook. We have that. Tons of other content, especially heading into WrestleMania season. On here at WWE War, we're here every other Thursday for you. Alternating with Extreme 3-Way Dance, which covers the history of ECW as well. Check it out. Tons of cool content featuring some of the best uh, content creators uh, in the pro wrestling and beyond. So, very proud of everyone here. A lot of cool stuff being churned out regularly, Marcus. And that includes our show. How are you? Sure does. Uh, I'm great. I want to know off the bat, um, what is your favorite incarnation of Billy Gunn? The wrestler or the songs? Uh, The wrestler. (laughs) Okay. The wrestler, I think, is fairly easy. I think it's early New Age Outlaws Billy Gunn. So, like, 98. Um, The themes... That's a little bit more fun to rank to me because you have Smoking Gun theme, which is fine. You have uh, New Age Outlaws theme. You have Ass Man. You have the one Billy Gunn. And you have Billy and Chuck, uh, just in WWE alone. So if I had to really quickly stack rank those, just on personal enjoyment, I don't give a fuck what the character did or anything else. I'd go one Billy Gunn, the one Billy Gunn. Uh, Ass Man, you look so good to me, Billy and Chuck. New Age Outlaws, Smoking Guns. You also get to throw in there the DX theme and then the... Oh, my God, that's right. You get to throw in uh, the Kings, right? The Run DMC? Yeah. Oh, shit, right. Uh, Remix? Uh, Maybe 
May, yeah, I guess I guess he used it. No, I don't think he's mm-hmm. there. It's after he's hurt. They used that after he's like the group originally. Is he? I thought it started like after Mania that or, they started using that's that. That's before, I'm pretty sure. All right. Yeah, I feel like he doesn't come out. See, no. But uh, the DX not, team is know. obviously number one. On okay. Our list, so. Anything you change in that rankings? Those power rankings? I think you got it right. You really do. It's tough, yeah. though. The one Billy Gunn is such a good song. Uh, awesome. I'm a big fan of the current day AEW version of Billy Gunn. Yeah. Uh, no bumps. Love that. And then a uh, cute Kip also climbs up my rankings. No, nah, I feel like a fan of the beautiful people. Reflection. All right. So let's dive into uh, what we're here to talk about. That is WD wrestling pay-per-views. Uh, we do so uh, in a Gun? seasonal format. <laughs> Well, I mean, we can do a Billy Gunn podcast. <laughs> War ranking of Billy Gunn matches. <laughs> it's a lot to break into. All right, so on the show, we're watching every pay-per-view ever in a seasonal format. That means we start with the pay-per-view following WrestleMania, wrap the season up with the uh, WrestleMania the following calendar year. Season we're currently doing right now, 2005-2006. So we start with Backlash 05. We end at WrestleMania 22. We're doing all the seasons, and we're kind of shuffling them up and doing them in random order. Uh, we do break these shows down on a plus minus system in a bunch of categories. If you think of everything in life, even in a wrestling as replacement level, the most average thing, what you'd expect it to be. Anything above that level is a plus. Anything below that level is a minus. We give a point for plus, take away a point for minus. Uh, we give two points. If it's really, really good, we give three points. If it's all time, great. Same on the other side. That's the max you can get. We do that in all the categories. We then watch every match. We grade every match. We take my grade, take Marcus's grade. We average those out. Do that over a plus minus from a replacement level match, which is a two and a half. Put that all into a big bucket. Net it all out. That total score is our total war score for that show. We then stack rank every pay-per-view ever by those scores to see what's the best, what's the worst. We currently have a near 100-point spread from our best to worst. We'll talk about that later. Um, And if you were with us last episode, you know uh, it was an all-timer and uh, probably the number one for a long time. Uh, but here tonight, we got a couple of interesting ones as well, Marcus. But before we get to it, we want to tell us about the categories that we use to rank these shows. Absolutely. Uh, our, for- our first category is build, followed up by commentary, atmosphere, notable moments, and importance, match grades like you just talked about, card structure, rewatchability, and then all-time matches. And for a match to be an all-timer, for us to be in the plus category, is something we both agree is 4.25 and above. For it to be a minus, it is something we both agree is 0.75 and below. All right. So the first show we're going to cover tonight, bud, is Vengeance 2005. And you could say that in most WWE pay-per-view years, this may be the greatest pay-per-view of the year, the best. 2005 calendar year, not even season, it's calendar year, is a sneaky loaded. I mean, we got Rumble 05, which is high on our list. WrestleMania 21 is high on our list. When I Stand, obviously, is high on our list. This show is going to do very well, I'm sure. SummerSlam 05 is a great pay-per-view. Then we got more to come at the end of the year. So 05 is like a really low-key year that I don't think you think of as being like kind of an all-time in-ring year for WWE. But there's, there's a lot in there uh, pay-per-view-wise. So Vengeance no. is obviously well-regarded. We'll see how it does. It took place on June 26th, 05, from the Thomas & Mack Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, announcers Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler, of course, is a Raw only pay per view. It's an interesting time though, because this show takes place uh, during the ongoing draft. So mm. the, this in 05, they, they staggered the draft, so they have like a pick every week or whatever. So we're right in the middle of it on the show. So we kind of they kind of sneakily loaded the show up, and whether you believe the backstage scuttlebutt or not, uh, there was a lot of motivation in the air. Coming off of One Night Stand three weeks earlier, the buzz that that show got, uh, a lot of the wrestlers are motivated to show they could also put on uh, a classic pay-per-view. And I also believe they purposely put this in the middle of the draft to load the show up to pop a rating similar to or trying to exceed One Night Stand, uh, which is, you know, whatever, get the business way you can. But they clearly they clearly stacked the show up with some big-time matches, draws from both shows because they were in the middle of the draft. There's a lot going on. Uh, do you remember those that chatter, Marcus, around this? 
Uh, very vaguely, but like looking back on it, um, it's kind of in the spirit, and it's probably the only time they ever actually pull off what they originally supposedly intended to do with like when they purchased the ECW, they purchased WCW. It's to be able to create your own competition while they do the one off ECW show, and you see on this show how that affects the, the in ring product, um, everything else like that, the promos, atmosphere. Um, it it really pushes the show, I think, to a level it wouldn't have gotten to without the ECW show taking place a couple of weeks prior. So, um, you know, probably true, but I also think that's that's what they were supposed it's a to do. It's not a it, negative. Yeah. It's a positive. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that's a good thing. All right, we had one dark match on this night. The Hurricane of Rosie, our tag team champions, defeated the Hearthrobs. So whatever. It's on heat, I believe. Um, then we get to our proper opener on the night. It's uh, Carlito... Defending his intercontinental title against Shelton Benjamin. Goes about 13 minutes. Uh, A pretty good opener here. Carlito had just won the intercontinental title after being drafted over to Raw. Kind of mirrored his debut on SmackDown the year before where he won the U.S. title on his first night. He wins the IC title his first night here. So that was kind of a cool idea. Cool concept. He retains. I went three and a half stars, Marcus. Very rock solid opener here to kick off the show. Yeah, I went three and a half too. Um just two young guys going out there getting after it. Um, really, really good, uh, you know, mid card, upper mid card style match for their continental title. Um, I'm always a sucker for that. Uh, next up, we have Christy Hemi taking on Victoria. And this is a, a bit of a character change and a change of alignment for Victoria. She recently turned heel by attacking Christy Hemi uh, on Monday Night Raw. Uh, I went two and a half, um, but that's not a bad two and a half. Um, I thought Chrissy Hemi did a good job keeping up with Victoria, and I think Victoria is one of the unsung uh, workers in all of WWE history uh, when you think about uh, a lot of the tasks that she was saddled with in ring. Uh, she really managed to pull a lot of people up with her to uh, you know passable or more than passable matches. So two and a half for me. Yeah, I went two and a half on this as well, and now you're two matches in, and you're like, all right, this is one of those nights where something's in the water and everything's going to maybe hit. Could it lead? Because some of these matches, when you look at pay per views, you kind of have those fulcrum matches, right? It's like, all right, if this match delivers, this could be a really good pay per view to great pay per view. If they don't deliver, it could tilt it the other way and maybe you start to sl- slink down and say, all right, well, this is an underperforming show. So all of a sudden, we're two in. Carlito Shelton either delivers or over delivers, depending on what you thought going in. And then Christy and Victoria, which has the potential to really be a stinker, uh, just given where Christy was in the ring. Two and a half, like it hits, you know? So it's like, okay, some of these balance matches are are tilting in favor of this being a great show. Uh, And then we roll on with another one, Kane versus Edge. Uh, Kane gets the win, which I thought was surprising at the time. He wins his clean, given where Edge was on his trajectory. But this feud had been going for a while, right? Lita had turned on Kane. The whole thing's stupid, but Lita turned on Kane, who was raping and keeping her captive. Um, We should be the heel, somebody's the face. Edge is the heel, Lita's with him. Kane gets a clean win, but this to me was three stars. It was was a pretty good match. The chemistry, you know, kind of clicked on the site. They had fought a few times, right? They were in the Gold Rush finals when Edge won the Gold Rush tournament. Um, They had the the rivalry going on. So Kane seemingly maybe puts it to bed here with the clean win over Edge, which is rare, I think, during this time. So, um, But again, another match that hits, Marcus. So we're kind of running running hot here to start the show. Yeah, I really like this a good bit. Uh, I went uh, 3.25. Uh, so yeah, just echoing everything that you just said. Um, and I don't think any damage done to edge either as a character, you would yeah. expect him to pick up the win here, but you know, he, he's the heel here. Um, you know, somehow, but he is the heel. Uh, and you're, you're never going to look bad. I think losing to Kane during this time period when you've got like a good story and a, a good match. So, um, next up, we got a big one. Uh, this is a rematch from WrestleMania 21 as it is. Shawn Michaels taking on Kurt Angle, who was the newest draft uh, selection to Monday Night Raw from SmackDown. Um, Shawn does pick up the win, gets his win back against Angle. And I liked this one a lot more than I liked the WrestleMania match. I went four and a half on this match. I went four and a quarter. Um, I think I had it a little slightly below uh, the Mania match. I, I do... The main match has its flaws, right? That we talked about the ankle lock and all that. I went four and a half. I thought this was just a half step behind, um, but it's still really great. I mean, it's 
again, it just shows you what this card has in, a, in such a loaded way, right? We're rolling out. This is a Mania Dream Match, and they're putting the rematch on this card, right? Normally, they'd say that for, like, SummerSlam. Obviously, Sean has big things set for SummerSlam, but uh, they do it here, and then Angle's off to SmackDown, right? Part of the draft. So this is kind of their farewell. Um, they do fight one more time on TV. They have, like, a little Iron Man match later in the year. It's kind of their rubber match, but um, this, this delivers, too. This is, it's a great match. Um, also, another great match, we keep rolling, is uh, John Cena defending his WWE Championship against Chris Jericho and Christian. Uh, I went four stars on this. This is uh, Jericho had been drafted over to Raw, uh, so we know he's there. Um, brings the title with him. Jericho had been kind of hot on his tail, trying to earn that title shot, trying to bounce back. And then you got Christian, um, who the crowd uh, and the fans were really behind as he's elevating up. So they're really into him as a character. They really want him to be world champion. We see it here. He gets drafted to SmackDown. We see it there. This chemistry for these three really clicked. It's a great triple threat match. There's some really cool bumps. Cena wins. And I'll tell you, Marcus, to me, this feels like the end. We'll, we'll cover why as we go forward. The end of the initial um, <clears throat> kind of love affair with the fans of John Cena. Like This match to me is kind of where it ends. That first year plus run of Cena as a face. Yeah, we'll uh, definitely get into it. Um, you know, I think just a short of it, this kind of seemed like the perfect time. Um, the odds were stacked up against Cena. You've got uh, a guy in Jericho who the fans were kind of uh, behind to see him get back into the title picture, to see him get another world title reign. Um, it had been, you know, a sneaky while since 2002. Uh, we all know how that ended at WrestleMania 18, uh, somewhat lackluster of fashion. Uh, so Jericho had definitely done more than enough to get back there. And you got a guy like Christian, um, who I was fully behind at the time. Uh, you know, I was 100% uh, in on Captain Charisma. Uh, he's really been picking up the pieces in the last year or two. Um, I guess since really like 2003, since getting away from Jericho, um, since like spring 2003, really putting the pieces together to become a main eventer, to work his way up the card. Uh, you see the match quality increase, I think um just see him put all these different pieces together in an organic fashion um that we really don't get to see anymore and people would follow that journey of him being a tag guy um really coming in um being part of a stable being a tag a tag guy the different incarnations of edge and christian um seeing him cut his teeth as a singles guy the transformations he had to go through um and now it feels like he's put it all together uh with this captain charisma uh character um yeah, it was a misstep, I think, uh, just to have Cena get drafted and to beat two of the favorites uh, on the Raw brand. So uh, as a triple threat match, though, I still went 4.25. Um, it didn't quite get up to that level of like a King of the Ring 2001 uh, triple right. threat match. It's not far off. Um, but, you know, it's not far off. Um, you know, it's it's for me, it's a classic. I think it's um, it's as good as a triple threat match as, as you can get um, really without getting to like that you know, four and three quarters, four and, you know, four and a half kind of territory. So uh, four and a quarter for me. All right. Uh, so then that brings us to our main event, Marcus. All right. Uh, for the world title, uh, again, uh, with the draft going on, we got back-to-back -back, uh, world title matches uh, on the same card. We've got in Hell in a Cell, uh, the rubber match. It's kind of not really a rubber match, but it's the third <laughs> it's match in the series. Up. Yeah, uh, we get Triple H challenging our world heavyweight champion, Day Batista. Um, Batista is in the all white gear, um, looking only as the animal Day Batista can look. Man, um, yeah, I uh, he might be playing on ninety nine on this night. He he just looks great. Uh, you get the uh, saliva entrance theme, um, which is the first time we're hearing that on pay per view. Mm -hmm. um, and this Hell in a Cell, it kind of, I think it's the exception to my, I guess, my take that there's two stories you can tell in Hell in a Cell. You can either tell Cat versus Mouse or Kong versus Godzilla. I think if, if whenever you stray from those two stories, those are the Hell in a Cell matches that really fall flat for me uh, or underperform, underdeliver. Um, but this one, it's neither. But what they do deliver on is like the ill intent and the viciousness. Um, you get a little bit of creativity here if that's your thing. Um, 
but it's really just like it's a proper blow off. Uh, the hatred is there. The the ill intent is there. Uh, and he got Batista surviving it all. Um, so I went the full five on this one. Um, again, it's I don't think anything could try to replicate this formula. Um, I just think this is this is kind of a one off, man. Um, kind of stands alone in the, the Hell in a Cell format of matches. You could say it walks alone. Oh, yeah. I went five as well. It's one of my favorite matches ever. I think it's fantastic. Um, it's on the short list of best Triple H matches ever. Uh, for sure, probably Batista's best match ever, I'm guessing. Um, so it's it, it's it's great. They really um, they really nail it. it. It's perfect. And Triple H puts them over three straight. You know, whether he should have three matches, three two rematches or not, it's another story. But uh, he does the right thing, lays down. Batista really wrecks him at the end. It closes out a pretty surprising night of awesome in-ring action uh, from the WWE side. And like you mentioned, because the draft was still ongoing, Batista hadn't been drafted to SmackDown yet. So for a brief blip, we had both champions on the same show. The next night, Batista would move to SmackDown. So this gets him away from Triple H and ends their feud. We'll cover it. I think if you walk back in history, I would say this is one move they may regret that they should have left well enough alone. Cena was great on SmackDown, worked perfectly on SmackDown. Batista was the king of Raw, had gotten over on Raw. That switch to me affects both of them. I think Batista less so because he's more seasoned at this point than Cena a little bit as a mate, as a top guy. Um, but I think it really hurts Cena, as we'll see, as we go through the season. So that said, Marcus, is one of our best in-ring shows uh, we've had with a, a eight uh, overall match wow. grade. So it's it's strong, very strong in-ring show. <clears throat> Every match delivers, even Victoria Christie, the worst of the bunch was two and a half. So. You're going for two and a half to five. That is that is a strong window of, of in-ring action. It outperformed one night stand, which is surprising. And not a ton of matches either. Um, right. Kind yeah, of follows the said. format of one night stand. What is that? Six matches, five matches, something like that. One night stand had more. Um, they had seven. This is six. So Six, okay. All right. But yeah, man. All right, let's get to our categories. Good. All right, here's Bill. Uh, two points for Cena and Batista switching in the draft. Obviously, Batista had a switch, but obviously he was going to. Two points for Batista's Hunter's final clash coming in the cell. It's been building for six months plus. This is the final explosion between these two guys. Uh, Carlito wins the IC title on his Raw debut. We talked about that. Two points for Edge and Lita coming together. Um, you know, whether it made sense for her to turn on Kane or not, whatever that has, that's separate. Her and Edge needed to be together, given what happened in real life. Um, the heat was going to be there. We talked about it our last episode or two episodes ago. Like, it's overtaking Edge's matches at this point. Uh, Lita was getting mm-hmm. booed. They had to put him together and lean into it. And it ends up being what Edge needed to unlock him to be a top heel finally. It was adding the heat with Lita. So two points for that because it's an all-time pairing. Uh, one point for Kane interrupting the wedding of Edge and Lita uh, with the all-time moment of the priest uh, about to say, you know, whatever whatever he was saying. And then Kane pops out from under the plant. He's looking around from under the ring. And they're and, and the, in, in perfect flow. The priest is like, blah, 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 blah. Jesus Christ, as Kane pops up from another ring. Um, it's an all-time moment in, in this feud. Uh, a point from uh, for Angle and Michaels running it back from Mania. Angle trying to, uh, Michael's trying to get the win over Angle coming in. Uh, a point for Christian organically rising and being pushed into the spot by the fans. And then a point for Jericho pretty much turning heel, targeting Cena. He's, he's kind of a tweener here still, but it's coming. But he's starting to plant those seeds that he's coming hard for Cena. All right, uh, a lot of positives. Let's see what the minuses are for build. Uh, we got uh, Victoria and Christie feuding over a bikini contest. Uh, Edge and Lita coming together at the expense of Matt Hardy. Uh, and then Kane somehow turning face after everything that he had done. Um, that's, you know, kind of just one of those things that could only happen in wrestling. Uh, but other than that, man, uh, everything was humming. So we get a war of eight for build. Pretty, very well built show. A very well built show. And they were doing this in conjunction with one night stand going on. So good on them. They really pull it together. <clears throat> all right. Commentary. A point for JR with his nicknames for the cell all night are always funny. Uh, a point for that damn Snitsky. Uh, Ross always does well. A point for good job by all Michael's angle. They get over the storyline, the importance is no BS. And then JR is, is great in the main event. Uh, he really turns it mm-hmm. on the moment, the violence, the cell, the title. He really, he really crushes it in that main event. Yeah, um, and our only minus is uh, Horny King popping up uh, for the hose uh, in what is a, a great segment <laughs> when I rewatched it. Um, 
Uh, other than that, man, it's um, we get a war of three for commentary. Um, mm-hmm. It just kind of goes to show when you do get a good team like uh, King and JR, um, this is a lot closer to replacement level. Uh, we haven't <laughs> even seen a lot of shows get dinged uh, based off yeah. of commentary. Um, so this one, you know, it, it's it's better to just, you know, be fine. Um, it was late era that, King so. and JR, which is shaky sometimes, but they, they, were, mm-hmm. they did pretty good tonight. Uh, overall, the segment you're mentioning, we'll talk about more in a second, but basically, Viscera Lillian Garcia had a little romantic thing going on. So she sings to him, she proposes to him. Then Godfather shows up in Las Vegas, he brings the hose. <laughs> Viscera chooses the hose <laughs> over poor Lillian. Um, so that's that. Uh, after he had wooed her for weeks. All right, atmosphere, we give a point for the crowd being engaged in that opener. They're really into the near falls. A point for the really cool looking Vegas themed set. They got the dice, the cards, the Las Vegas sign with the matches. A uh, point for the crowd being super into Edge and Kane at the end. It was a plotting match, but they hung in and they were hot at the finish. A uh, huge pop for Michaels, point for that. Big pop for Godfather, point for that. Big pop for Cena, point for that. Uh, the crowd was super into the triple threat, so point for that. Uh, point for Batista's entrance. Uh, you did the you know the machine guns with the pyro and, and uh, I walk alone. A point for Batista's amazing white trunks you mentioned earlier. Um, and then a point for the crowd reaction to the weapon spots. It adds a lot to the violence of those matches when the crowd is buying into it, and they really do buy in here. So uh, it really adds a lot to the match. Uh, for our minuses, we got uh, the crowd wanting nothing to do with Christy Hemi. Again, she's so new. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's, it's a big ask of her being out there uh, to get over as a baby face. Um, but they're booing her the whole match. Uh, and then we get the Matt Hardy chants that continue. Um, it, they continue to dominate and kind of mm-hmm. um, overpower Edge's push. Um, yeah. And then the crowd gets restless during the um, the, the Lillian and Viscera segment uh, until we get the payoff uh, with Godfather coming out. Yeah, it's, it's a little long in the tooth in the middle there. You could, yeah. you could argue that could have been a raw thing, probably. I know they only had six matches and wanted to keep things rolling, but I don't know. All right, so that's a plus seven for atmosphere. So strong crowd, strong atmosphere. Notable moments. This might be one of the weaker ones. This is, not a lot happens on the show. Uh, we got the return of Godfather. It's Christian's first ever pay-per-view world title shot. So a point for that. A point for Batista finishing the series with Triple H beats him three straight times. And then a point for being the first pay-per-view appearance of I Walk Alone, which is an iconic theme song. Uh, for our minuses, we get uh, Edge losing clean during his super push. And then uh, Sean hanging on way too long in the ankle lock again. Um, but that yeah. gives us a, um, a, a plus two, excuse yeah, me, so plus again, two for a lot, notable moments importance. Not a lot happens on the show for being so great. Uh, plus eight for in ring. Talked about that card structure, two points for everyone's entrance, matching their character motivation. If you're angry, you're running out, you're cocky, you're strutting out. Like it was a really, uh, everyone hit, everyone hit there. Everything worked on the show. So plus two for that. Uh, plus one for a really good opener with the young dudes. I see title. You know, a lot of time. They really structured that great. Um, A point for what we talked about earlier, stacking this card with stars made a lot of sense. Also a point for stacking the big three at the end. Uh, Really gave a big card feel to build, build, build. Then you get Kurt, Sean, the both title matches. Closing with the cell was a smart move. Um, A point for adding the cell to Batista, Triple H. Like they've already had two kind of basic matches. They needed some kind of big gimmick to amp it up. And then again, a point for being a tight card. Only six matches, a lot of time and focus, and it really it really paid off. Yep. Uh, for our minuses, we got uh, the this <laughs> million. Again, it's kind of a, a raw segment. Um, it goes on way too long. Uh, the card flow, it hits a wall there at that point. Uh, and then the um, the third Triple H and Batista match felt like one too many uh, since Triple H has been beaten twice. If there is a way, I think, to cut out the backlash match, mm-hmm. and, you know, maybe that becomes a tag match of sorts. Um, yeah. Then that's you know something better. Maybe you like Batista Flair with Hunter on the outside. He's gonna earn something like I don't know. Maybe they do something like that, All right? But, yeah. All right. So plus five for card structure. Rewatchability. Give a point for Angle hitting a German on the announce table. Ridiculous. Also, Angle hitting a buckle bomb on Michaels. Uh, a point for Godfather's hose as they enter the ring. Very rewatchable. A point for the super fu to the floor by Cena. Uh, that was great. A point for the Tower of Doom with Jericho, Cena, and Christian looked awesome. A point for all the barbed wire chair shots in the, in the cell. And then a point for Hunter who spits blood after he gets hit under the jaw. Uh, just to look really cool as well timed. Uh, for our minuses, uh, we only got one. And that's uh, Lillian singing love songs to Vis. And then, <laughs> you 
you know, maybe with everything that's, uh, you know, come out, um, you know, but, you know, you get the hose uh, kind of, you know, taking her, her heat away. So, or the yeah, it's awkward. Alone. It's awkward having to watch her sing like this on a couch looking at her while she's singing love songs. This was, it was a little rough. And then, yeah, I got just completely cocked by the hose and Godfather comes out and makes her look kind of like a loser big time on the show. So, yeah, lost in that. Uh, almost like in embarrassing. Vegas. I was like, uh, Oh, it was rough to watch. The, the singing alone was rough to watch. Uh, and then seeing her get kind of humiliated was tough. All right, so it's a plus six rewatchability. We had two all-time matches and almost three, which might have been the record. Um, Cena, it's my fault that the Cena Jericho Christian falls a little short. But Batista Hunter and Michael's Angle both deliver. So it's a plus two, Marcus, for a total score of 41 points. And right. that puts right. it as our fourth best show of all time. Um, so look, if it wasn't for our last one night stand, uh, we might have come in and been like, oh shit, like this is a it, it kind of pales now to what I stand, but we're talking fourth all time. Um, were you surprised or was this about where you thought? I knew when we started the season, um, that one night or uh, that Vengeance 2005 was going to be a really good show. Uh, I knew the back. The back half of the show with the three big matches was really good. Um, but for everything else to really like pull its weight, I didn't remember that. Um, and so, yeah, if it was holding top 10 up to this point, absolutely. Yeah. But inside the top five, that's surprising. I mean, it just edges out WrestleMania 7 by a uh, you know, point and a half right on the heels of SummerSlam 90. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a strong, strong showing. And if I, we'd have to look back at our scores, but it's going to be up there as as one of the best back to back outings they've ever had. And I would mm. argue it's definitely the best ever two shows they've had in one month, <laughs> like One Night Stand and then Three Weeks Later Vengeance, a seventy nine and a forty one in our scale with legendary matches and moments. I mean, it's a really insanely strong month for them. So, um, all right, let's move over now to our final show of the night, and that is Great American Bash two thousand five. Something tells me the streak is in danger here, but let's see. Uh, this was July 24th at the HSBC Arena in Buffalo. Uh, we had Michael Cole and Taz on the call. It's a SmackDown-only show. We had one match on Heat. That is Paul London defending his cruiserweight title of Anunzio. And then we roll into the pay-per-view proper as the newly formed Legion of Doom as Road Warrior Animal has returned to the company again off of another dvd like after ecw's dvd uh success the legion of doom road warriors dvd did extremely well they bring animal back on the heels of that and they rebuild the legion of doom as he now teams with our old friend hyden uh not quite i don't know if they're official <laughs> legion of doom 2000 yet they might just be animal and hyden here uh mm -hmm. they have christy hemby with them so the pieces are kind of there uh but they'll formally become more of a package as we'll see later in the year they take on eminem and defeat them for the tag team titles, uh, which shocked me at the time. I mean, I was like, holy shit, I cannot believe they just took these belts off Eminem, who were hot since their debut. Uh, but I guess they wanted to give Animal the moment. They're in Minnesota, which is kind of a – I'm sorry, not Minnesota. They're in um, Buffalo, which is – Buffalo. I don't, I don't know if it's big Road Warrior territory, but they give them a big pop. Uh, so it's, it's a cool moment uh, to give Animal. And, and again, they're paying tribute to Hawk and – to the DVD sales. So uh, I went three though. It, it's a fun little opener for sure, but Eminem's great. Yeah. You're kind of like devaluing your, your tag team titles a bit, but that's, you know, if you're going to do it, that's kind of a title to do that with. Um, yeah. So it is just surprising at the time. Um, even looking back on it, um, I was, <laughs> I was big time into Eminem. Uh, I thought, it, you know, it was a great, great package, a great act. Um, so yeah, to see them pull the titles off Eminem, uh, I was a bit surprising, um, but for the match, I went uh, 2.75. Uh, that'll take us to our next match, uh, which features Booker T taking on a new addition to the SmackDown roster, and that is Captain Charisma Christian. Uh, just two pros going, going at it. Um, I went 3.25. Might be a little bit underwhelming, but again, this match is kind of cold. I didn't have a whole lot of time to really get something going for on TV. So uh, just kind of a match being thrown out there. Yeah, I went two three quarters. They didn't really hit for me. I mean, we're coming off of the bestiality sex. <laughs> Christian shows up on SmackDown. And it's like, it's already like he was so hot and the crowd wanted it so bad. 
and basically he's an FU. Like they're like, all right, go to SmackDown. And you think, okay, well maybe he'll be could have been a contender for JBL on the show. Like he was at, I mean, for uh, Batista at the show, he's at that level. Mm -hmm. Instead, they mm -hmm. shunt him into this random veteran match. He's not even really involved. Um, they do. He does get a title match with Batista on TV, and Batista beats him, and that pretty much ends his run. And it really leads to him going to TNA and becoming a TNA star because he gets disenfranchised with, okay, it's never going to happen here. If, if it's not going to happen now while I'm super over, it's never going to happen. Um, so he's he's pretty much – he hangs around for a little bit longer until his contract's up, but it's not much. Um, all right, next up is our United States title, title match. Orlando Jordan defends against Chris Benoit and defeats him. Another shocking finish at the show. Uh, this seemed like a formality that Benoit would end this experiment with OJ, uh, but he beats him. Uh, OJ sneaks the win. It was it like he takes the buckle pad off, right? Benoit hits the buckle and he rolls him up or something. But uh, the match itself is surprisingly fine. I went three and a quarter. Like it's Benoit carrying him. Um, it, they go long too. It's like eight, I think it's like eighteen minutes or something. They give him a shitload of time. No, fourteen. So still, that's a lot for. It might as well be thirty for Jordan. Um, so a fine match show, but a really weird decision to have Jordan beat him. Yeah, and like I just want to like I guess I think highlight um the skill set of a lot of the guys that are in the, the upper mid card at this time. While we do have like Cena and Batista on top, uh when guys like Guerrero and Benoit um and Christian and Jericho are like in your upper mid card, you really have the opportunity to like pull a lot of people up uh, and, and solidify that part of the card. And you, you see that here with Benoit. Uh, with the ring general he was like you can just see there's not a lot of spots called in this match and they just have their main bullet points that they're going to hit throughout the match and jordan's just along for the ride and it's, it's kind of just like a sink or swim type of match like you're out there live no safety net um it's a match that's not rehearsed to death um it's just kind of refreshing to watch that like it's it's non-stop action back and forth the match never really like settles to a lull um so it kind of helps that 14 minutes go by pretty quickly um, but I went uh, 3.25 with this match as well. Um, so we go to uh, a curious match on this card. Uh, it is The Undertaker taking on Muhammad Hassan. And lost in the background of this match is this match is for the number one contendership to the World Heavyweight Championship, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the winner gets a title yes. shot at SummerSlam. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I went to with this match and of course this is, was the, the terrorist attack in London? Was that the, the week prior or maybe two weeks it's like prior? A week or so prior? I mean, so this, this was really meant to be Hassan's like crowning moment. So he was going to win this match and then face Batista at SummerSlam in Washington, DC. That was like the plan. It was Batista's hometown, Hassan, the anti-American stuff. I don't know if Hassan was going to win the title or not, but I think it was at least rumored at the time as a possibility. Um, they were all in on him. Leading up to this match, uh, they do a thing where a bunch of masked men, terrorists, masked terrorists, attack on a taker. They choke him with wire. Like it's it's a pretty pretty bad attack and, and just all time bad luck for WWE. This aired pretty much a day of the terrorist attacks in London. Um, so they were at a bad spot. I don't know if they would have had time to get the tape back from the affiliates. I mean, don't forget, it's not USA. It's all the different affiliates. So, like, it was yeah. kind of out there at that point. Um, they probably could have found a way to not run it, but it does run. Um, and the and the, the heat they get and the blowback they get pretty much makes them have to put Hassan on ice. It's, like, too much. Um, so he gets squashed here for the most part. Taker throws him through the, the stage and into hell, and we never see him again. Uh, so that's pretty much it for Hassan. And they had to write him off. And it, it sucks for Mark Capani, who's the, the wrestler. I think this is it. He pretty much leaves the business after this. He doesn't really do anything else. He was, he was good in the role. I mean, he gave it his all. It was just really shit timing. Um, but they probably saved them from themselves, to be honest with you. Like him beating Taker and maybe beating Batista or, or even main event at SummerSlam probably would have been a, a rough call. So I think, I, think, I think they probably got saved in a way. But just shit timing all around. Um, on their on you know their part obviously it's it was a tragedy so I'm not trying to make light of that but just on their end of it I went two stars on this I mean it was basically a squash yeah and there's not a whole lot of couth with the storytelling in WWE at this point uh you know we're seeing everybody's on the gas we're seeing uh you know blade jobs we're seeing the unprotected chair shots we're oh, seeing and we're the, we're months away from Dr. Heine and the jump back to USA where Vince goes in hyperdrive madman mode so 
Yeah. So, you know, chances are this character would not have been uh, curtailed at all. Uh, they wouldn't have handled it with any any sort of delicacy. So it's probably just best for everybody that the character went away. Unfortunate for the wrestler. I didn't I did enjoy the character. Um enjoyed like the presentation, the package, um, liked the idea of what it could have been initially. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they got they went way, way off the rails. They kind of went with the laziest route. Um and that's it for the character. Um, so what do we got next, JT? Up next, we have six man tag action. And uh, this is kind of, I guess, our one tribute to ECW coming off of one night stand as a brand new stable, the Mexicools, Super Crazy, Psychosis, and Juventud Guerrera take on the Blue World Order, Stevie Richards, Blue Meanie, and Nova. Um, so Nova, of course, was Simon Dean. <clears throat> he starts doing double duty for a little while um, in WWE because they do bring the BWO sticks around for a little bit, but he stays active as Simon Dean as well. So uh, he does double duty here for a minute. Um, Meanie, this is the job we mentioned the last episode. It's the job he gets as a result of JBL beating the shit out of him at one night stand. So they hire him, they put him with Stevie. So a lot of kind of cool stuff there with the three of them uh coming together as a BWO. This feels like an old school ECW kind of feud with the Blue World Order versus the Mexicals. Of course, the other team was really together at the time in ECW, but Nova kind of had some stuff going on with, with super crazy, etc. But Mexicals was kind of a criticized gimmick as well because they ride the wand deer and it's very stereotypical but all three guys leaned in and they were still really good in the ring this match though is kind of whatever i went two and a half um the bwo comes out on the power we are the big wheels kind of mocking the mexico so it, it's fine i mean if anything this is more of a curious moment of um the Me- uh, blue world order getting a duty pay-per-view match <laughs> which is kind of weird yeah two for me just kind of felt directionless um you know, a little sloppy. Um, but uh, we're going to tighten things up with uh, Rey Mysterio taking on Eddie Guerrero. Um, I'm trying to remember the stipulation for this match. I believe it was if Rey won, then the secret was that it had to be ke- uh, kept. Eddie couldn't Eddie couldn't uh, reveal the secret. I believe that was the stipulation yeah. for this match. Right. If Mysterio won, Eddie um, couldn't reveal the secret about um, Rey's son, Dominic. Uh, which Eddie would have done if he won, and of course he does it anyway. We'll cover that next one. <laughs> My lad. Oh, uh, we'll get to that. But yes, that's that's no. heading in. He's been teasing a secret. If Ray wins, he has to keep the secret. Yeah. So they've been working uh, since before this season started, uh, going back to the season we've already covered, uh, in you know four or five. Um, so this is just another match in their series. Um, but again, like for this to kind of be their um, their their basement so far, their floor uh 3.75 for me um still really really good work from these two i went 375 as well uh and this one's you know ray wins there's a judgment day where eddie hits him with the chair for the dq and now ray wins this one but like we said eddie reneges anyway and that gets them to SummerSlam, which is another great match so this has been a great feud um really good in ring as you expect of course uh, it's actually the third, I guess, because Mania wasn't part of the feud per se, but it kind of kicks off the feud a little bit. Yeah, and I think they had a, a match on SmackDown here and there. Yeah, they do too. You're right. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, we have our cool down before the main event. That's Tori Wilson and Melina. Uh, Melina gets the win, so salvages the night for Eminem. I want to start a half. There's really not much to this. Yeah, uh, not a whole lot to it. I went two um, just because it's not like they went out there and embarrassed uh, themselves. You know, it, it's it, it's fine. Um, it's it's not like anything like we saw in 1999. Um, so uh, we go to our main event with the newly acquired uh, World Heavyweight Champion, Dave Batista, taking on JBL, who is here because uh, when SmackDown was temporarily without a champion, Teddy Long put together a, uh, I believe it was a, a five or six man match, um, elimination style. With the winner becoming the new SmackDown champion, JBL wins, last eliminating Christian, I believe. Um, but uh, we get the big reveal that Batista is the newest uh, draft pick of SmackDown, bringing the world title over. So we will get uh, Batista and JBL here instead. And I went with the 2.75, and we kind of talked about it. It feels like there's like a spectacle match, an attraction mm-hmm. match. Maybe that's a better uh, term. There's like an attraction match that's missing from this card. 
I don't know if it would have been better to put like, you know, a big time four way, maybe, maybe include Christian and Booker in this match just to make it something different. Um, I don't know whether you, you make this a gimmick match already and do like a quick thing on TV to kind of heat this up. Uh, but just kind of being a traditional one-on-one match, JBL Batista, um, and you know, to get to like a non-finish basically just kind of just, you know, I don't know, ended with a fart for me. So I went 2.75. Yeah, I I did too. And it's again, like it's such a mistake to switch these guys, but I I do think the only benefit of the doubt will give me here is I think they had a really kind of like rebook on the fly with this because I think Batista was supposed to beat JBL clean. And it's like a one-time gatekeeper thing to SmackDown because he is supposed to fight Hassan at, at SummerSlam. I think they panicked and they were like, okay, if it's not Hassan, who the hell is he going to fight? So they do this to stretch it out two shows. Christian. So I, I, but, yes. Yeah. And if you don't want to do Christian here, I'm okay with it. If you want to have JBL here and have Batista kill him, gatekeeper, and then do Batista Christian at SummerSlam. Christian doesn't even fight at SummerSlam. And that would have been a perfect, like, it doesn't have to close the show because you're going to have two other big matches on the card. It gives Christian his big world title match, singles match on on uh, pay-per-view. I think that would have been the way to go. We didn't need two of these. We've seen a year of JBL in these matches. Like the whole point was to get a break from it, and we go from uh, Judgment Day, where he gets his world title rematch, right to Great American Bash. The next time we see him, he's in another world title match. And spoiler, SummerSlam, he's in another world title match. So it's like, you know, we're what are we doing? Like we're we're still rolling with this. It's 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 a weird, just like oh, he's seen his goal, but he's just here, and oh, it, we're back to the same thing. So, um. Early signs that the switch is probably a rough idea. And then when JBO wins by DQ, it's like, all right, Batista's is already neutered a bit here. Somehow he crushed Triple H three straight matches. And now he's, you know, getting DQ against JBL. It just felt like we're off the rails a bit. So, all right. So that nets everything out to 1.75 for a total match grades. Um, Quite the drop. Yeah, not, not as good. Uh, all right, let's get to the categories. Uh, this is a, a decently well built show because like, we have the Guerrero Mysterio stuff. That's a plus three. I mean, you got Vicky, uh, she debuts, Vicky Guerrero, Dominic Mysterio um, debuts. All the other Guerrero kids are out there. It's dominating SmackDown. A lot going on. So plus three. Uh, point for Christian. He did attack Booker on SmackDown and beat him. So a point for that. A point for Guerrero injuring Benoit's neck on TV. Um, that allowed OJ to have something to target. So they did build that up a little bit as well. And then a point for JBL winning the vacant SmackDown title, but he gets screwed as soon as Batista gets drafted over to close that show. Yeah, even with all like the draft stuff going on um, and a lot of the strange booking, SmackDown week to week is still like a very good show um, yeah. during this time period. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the the, the run during this time. Um, <laughs> getting into the minuses, uh, we've got a few here. We got JBL being inserted right back into the world title pitcher. Really cools Batista off. We get Hassan uh, having his push ended and the character code off uh, just by the terrible timing with the uh, unfortunate terrorist attacks and not being able to pull the footage from the tapes. Uh, we get LOD being resurrected because of the successful DVD sales. Heidenreich gets jammed into that. Uh, the BWO challenging the Mexico is on the website over being a group that interfered in things first. Um, not exactly the strongest build. Um, so, yeah, that levels us out to a two for build. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it, there's some good build, and then yeah, there's some there's some bad build. Um, all right, so let's get to commentary, which usually is the strong suit. We'll see if it holds up for SmackDown because Cole and Taz, we love, um, definitely a superior team here. So let's see how we do. Uh, we have a point for doing a really nice job talking about Legion of Doom's history with Great American Bash. That was a nice tie-in. A point for Taz calling out how Orlando Jordan has not been tested as U.S. champion. They also do a good job calling the psychology of. Uh, the hole in Benoit's neck, I guess. They put a hole in his neck with that attack. Um, and OJ attacking it. They really call it the psychology throughout the match. A point for Cole, acknowledging that Hassan has had a lot of controversy in the media. This could be his last match. They don't hide from it. They're like, basically, look, there's a lot of shit going on. This might be it. They're owning it. This is probably the last time we're going to see him. A, pass, a point for Taz saying, George Washington wore a blue wig, but because everything was black and white, we couldn't tell. Everything was black and white back then. Uh, a point for a great job pushing along the story of Ray and Eddie. Ray's goals of ending the match quick, avoiding the secret. Eddie's new addiction being manipulation uh, versus, you know, drugs or alcohol. And then just the anger over Eddie's actions. So we actually give two for that because they're, they're phenomenal um, in that match. 
And then a point for Cole and Taz uh, being horny during the uh, bra and panties match. It's different than King. It's just presented as joking. And Cole uh, jokes that Taz is calling holes during the match. So it's more like playful versus King just being a creepy leech uh, during that. So. Yeah, uh, looking at our minuses, we only got one, and that's the sympathizers. The sympathizers are out here. The sympathizers. Look at those sympathizers. It was almost worse than the Crusaders. <laughs> yeah, the uh, those masked men look very sympathetic. Super annoying. Uh, that's a plus seven, though, Marcus, for commentary. Yeah. So that's, like we said, strong performance. That's gonna All right, atmosphere. Uh, we gave a point for the red, white, and blue throwback ropes for the Great American Bash. was cool. A point for the m m entrance, which is always great. A point for LOD winning the belts. It gets a big pop. A point for Hassan in his final show. Has a really cool entrance out in the sedan. Gets carried out. A point for Undertaker's entrance. Of course, always hits. A point for the crowd buzz when Taker destroys Hassan and the and the sympathizers. Uh, they can kind of feel where this is headed. It's just, just destroying everyone. Uh, a point for the loud ECW chance for the BWO. Um, I love the mood shift in the crowd. When that heel Eddie cell phone theme hits... Everything turns so dark and like it sure he's does. such a good job. And we we kind of complained about it when I Sam, but it's only because he carried it over. But um the the darkness and cloud that hangs over the arena when he comes out looking so angry and mean and dark and that theme, uh just everything, everything changes. Uh a point for the crowd, uh, you know, again, super into Guerrero Ray though, when Ray comes out. A point for JBL's Apollo Creed entrance. Uh, kind of classic, even though the match is stupid. He looks cool in the Apollo Creed gear. And then a point for Batista, just mega pop in his I Walk Alone entrance. Uh, for our minuses, uh, we only got one here. Uh, that's the crowd cheer, uh, really into Christian booing Booker. Uh, and this ground swell is, is really you know killing their plans uh, for how they're trying to present Christian and Booker. Um, but a, a very replacement level crowd uh, on the negative side of things. Yeah, man. Plus 10 on atmosphere. It's going to carry <laughs> carry the show. The crowd is hot. <clears throat> it looked cool. The crowd is into things. Some good entrances. So it does well there. Uh, not a lot of moments, as is the par for this this era. Uh, Animal and Heidi Reich win the tag titles. Point for that. Point for the Mexico's pay-per-view debut. And a point for Dominic's pay-per-view debut. Um, and I guess we'll give a point. We should probably bump this. A point for the BWO pay-per-view debut. We'll add that in there. Mm. Um, so some three big debuts. Dominic... At the time, it seems like a throwaway, right? His debut in the story, but Dirty <laughs> Dom makes his uh, pay-per-view debut about 14 years before his uh, real debut. So, All right. Uh, for our minuses, we got uh, Hassan being done, killed off, um, Eminem losing the titles uh, in really like hastily fashion, uh, Christian losing clean, um, again, killing the dreams of his push, uh, really mm -hmm. killing the fans as well, and then uh, Undertaker. You know, visually ending Hassan's career. Um, the fact that he doesn't end up, you know, continuing in pro wrestling, he doesn't go to TNA or anything like that. Uh, this yeah, is he it for the guy. Buries him. Yeah, that's it. Mm. <clears throat> this is the definition of bury me softly, brother. The Rusev would use later, but um, he he yeah, throws him to hell. Uh, so that's a zero uh, flat on uh, moments. So balances out. Uh, match grades we said was a one point seven five. Card structure, uh, we start hot with the entrances and the title change, Eminem and LOD, so that's cool. A point for good use of Benoit stabilizing the SmackDown mid-card as he's coming off a Raw. A point for Undertaker waking up the crowd as he destroys Hassan's crew after a sluggish match. They kind of come to life for the uh, attack. A point for Eddie and Ray setting up as a dramatic play. Uh, it's such a change. It plays out so intensely. Their feud is so unique during this time. Yeah, nothing like it. Um, for our minuses, we got uh, Christian being shipped off to SmackDown uh, and right back to the mid card, undoing all the hard work he done over in Raw. Uh, Hassan goes from world title contender um, to end of end of his life uh, as a character overnight. Mm -hmm. uh, we get the Braun panties match being put in the death slot. Um, just stack the big stuff back to back to back as we just really saw with Vengeance. Uh, works better that way. Uh, we get the terrible finish for JBL. Uh, the DQ finish with Batista. You know, losing his cool, uh, getting himself disqualified, um, and it's it's a desperate march to SummerSlam with Hassan, and those plans falling apart. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but again, they put themselves in a situation they didn't have to by right. moving the world champions instead of just moving the pieces around them. Yeah, agreed. All right, because they could have kept Cena there, 
and moved Christian or Jericho there. Like it maybe would have helped a little mm-hmm. bit with the live crowd versus the take. Like the things they could have done probably. Um, or move Christian and have Jericho fight Batista could have been good because I don't think Batista gets, I don't think they flip the crowd like with Cena um, with Batista. Right. So, and then move Christian, let him be seen as guy for a bit. So I think that could have been an yep. option. All right. So it's a zero for card structure. Rewatchability, you give a point for LOD's emotional win and celebration. It was really cool. Animal dedicated to Hawk. A point for Eddie's promo about Dominic, his secret, his obsession about beating Ray. Which is all this is about, right? You know, he's so angry, he can't be right. He's just being a wicked asshole. A uh, point for Benoit's superplex on OJ looked great. Uh, and a point for Taker slings Davari through the side of the announce table and then sends Hassan on the last ride. Like that little stretch of that beatdown was really cool. Um, the match s- sucks, but that beatdown is great. Yep. Uh, for our minds, we got uh, OJ beating Benoit after the long match and seemingly botched repeat finish. Uh, we get Hassan's rambling promo. We get uh, the running, uh, running the masked henchman back out. Which right. I what are you do doing? not believe they did that. Um, yeah, you, you, I don't think he got away with it on SmackDown, but it happened um, without a ton of consequence. Um, and you, you, you trot him back out here on pay per view. That was insane. I know they want to take her uh, to like write everything off, but come on. Yeah, uh, JBL getting the visual pin on Batista. Um, need to be more of a demolition uh, by Batista of JBL. Uh, we do get the discussing uh, chair shots on JBL uh, and Orlando Jordan, mm-hmm. uh, you know, which is supposed to make up for it at the time. But looking back on it now, you know, we don't love the uh, protected chair shots all the time. So it's a negative one of rewatchability. Um, the henchmen, is, and it's not like those sympathizers were like a part of Hassan's gimmick forever. It's not like they had been no. with them since the beginning and you got to write them. I mean, the, the, they the terrorist. It was the first time they were ever on. So you didn't need them yeah. to be there again. Take or just destroy. You could just drop it. Yeah. yeah, just destroy Davari and Hassan and move on. Yeah, and that's it. And a little part of me is surprised, honestly, that they didn't just like temporarily have him just go away for a few months and come back. They probably would have got away with it. I don't think the mainstream media would have given a shit. Like if they just would have yeah. went away and came back in September on SmackDown or Raw, like flip them to Raw, whatever you want to do. Like just have them kind of quietly come back but i guess they didn't care enough all right no all-time matches either way so that gives us a final total score of 19.75 um i would say maybe a little overachieved given the card in the in-ring action uh it's tied with wrestlemania 35 (laughs) which is kind of crazy um i'm I'm guessing 35 probably has the better match i'm trying to think what the best match is uh, on that show but uh, 35 is uh, Daniel Bryan and uh, Kofi. Oh, Kofi. That's yeah, a five star. Yeah, so we're good. <clears throat> all right. So that makes it uh, 49th all time. Just ahead of Vengeance 01, it's at 19 and a half. Survivor Series 11 is at 18 and three quarters. Just above it is WrestleMania 35, tied. And then Judgment Day 04 and Invasion 01 at 20, right above it. So that's kind of where it's at. Um, I'll, I'll say it overachieved a little bit. I think the atmosphere really carried it. That and the commentary, because Cole and Taz are so good. Uh, but the hot crowd really helped this one. If, the, if we, you take five points off of that with the crowd, maybe, um, now you're looking at, you know, that would have dropped it all the way down to 70-ish around Royal Rumble 93, payback 15 territory. So the crowd really carried the show. Yeah, you look at the company that the show is in, um, you know, WrestleMania 35, Vengeance 01, you know, those are shows where, like, stuff happened, you know, um, the tournament for uh, the Undisputed title, uh, Kofi Mania. Um, So, yeah, I think, you know, the crowd not being into it, I think the TV not being as good, commentary not being as good, uh, you're you're just a few points away from falling what, you know, what I think is going to end up being, like, our replacement level, you know, that 12, 10, 9 territory. Um, but this one overachieved, like you said. So, and again, n- nothing really happened on the show outside of the uh, the killing off of Hassan. Um, so, nothing positive, I'd say, uh, really happened on the show. We don't get a great LOD match. win the tag titles and a couple <clears> debuts. Yeah, that's really it. The yeah. uh, and the rest of my shows like thirty five. You know, they don't do great on our system because um, they're so bloated. This is a good, but there's a lot of bad, and that that outweighs a lot of times. So. Um, all right, so there you go. That slot's in there. Our worst show of all time, Marcus, is Greatest Royal Rumble 2018. It is our 116th show at a negative 17.25. Uh, so that shows you how far down that is. Um, and that sets up our top 10. 
Our 10th best show of all time is WrestleMania 18 at 36.75. Number nine is Evolution 2018 with a 38. Uh, number eight, SummerSlam 99, 38.25. At seven with the tiebreaker is the SummerSlam 1992 with a 38.25. SummerSlam 01 is our sixth best show of all time at 39. Our fifth best show of all time is WrestleMania 7 with a 39.5. Our fourth best show, Vengeance 2005 that we talked about tonight, cracks the top four, 41 points. Into our top three is the SummerSlam in 1990 with a war of 42. Royal Rumble 2002 is our second best show of all time at 44. And our new number one is One Night Stand 2005. Again, to hear that, check out our last episode with a war of 79. Pretty wild. All right, that'll do it here for us. Thank you for being with us. We'll be back in two weeks. We'll have another standalone episode. We're just going to cover SummerSlam 05 on its own because it's a pretty big show. A lot to get into on that show. And then we'll be back a month from today with uh, the fall. We'll get Unforgiven and No Mercy, I think, of the next two after that. So continue to move our way through the season. Be sure to check out everything in North-South Connection, like I mentioned earlier. TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Facebook, Instagram for the WrestleMania match countdown, hitting every match ever, all 402 of them plus tons of other great content. So be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, leave a like, share us around. We really appreciate it. Stuff goes a long way in helping us continue to grow. So continue to live your life above replacement level. We'll talk to you in two weeks. Everyone take care.